Hi, it's Panda Movies here. Today, I'm going to explain the Filipino horror movie called Kulam. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. The movie opens with Mira walking away from a car accident, all bloody and weak. She suddenly wakes up in a hospital, hearing a woman cry from outside. Mira decided to see what it was and only saw empty halls with splotches of blood and hair. She screams in terror as a ghostly apparition appears in front of her out of nowhere. The scene cuts to her in the hospital with her husband, Paul, and her doctor. The doctor explained that she's suffering from amnesia due to the car crash. The couple arrived at their home, welcoming Mira and introducing her to her family, as if she were meeting them for the first time. They welcomed her warmly except for her daughter, Sophie, who seemed to be distant towards her mother. Paul noticed that Mira had unusual quirks like finding her outside their house in the middle of the night, barefoot and seemingly talking to no one. One night, while Dave was visiting Mira, he told her that she promised that she'd leave Paul for him. This was a result of Paul cheating on her earlier in the relationship which caused their family to deteriorate. Dave even reminded Mira that she entrusted him with her deep secret, with Mira getting more confused, their confrontation got more intense, and the glass of juice in Dave's hand exploded out of nowhere, injuring him and ending the conversation. Over a span of a few days, Mira decided to patch things up with her daughter, Sophie. She caught her trying to sneak in the doll room which Sophie described as off-limits to her. This made her mother confused on why that came to be. Mira began guiding her inside and because her daughter is blind, let Sophie feel the dolls and their clothing. Mira said that she can choose a doll that she likes, and weirdly, her daughter chose a creepy looking doll that looked out of place from the rest of her doll collection. Sophie wanted to keep it, but Mira reacted harshly out of fear, and the situation escalated, making Sophie run to Paul and undoing the patching. She tried to convince Sophie to exchange the creepy doll with a more beautiful one, but Sophie refused. Paul told her to give her daughter some space and she did. Mira couldn't get what Dave told her that night out of her head something about a secret that she told him. She called up Dave to tell her what it is, and he tells her that she has a twin sister named Maria that got sent to a mental institution after her mother's death. They went to visit her, but got informed that Maria died a month ago due to suicide. Paul called the university to claim the corpse and had her cremated. Time goes by and Sophie undergoes an eye transplant. She was excited because there was going to be an upcoming eclipse, and it was her first time seeing again since she went blind. After removing the bandages around her eyes, she looked around the room, her vision was blurry, but she could make out the figures of her family. She then points at the wall, seeing a strange black figure standing, but her family tells her that there was no one there. Understandably, people got freaked out. Not able to take the supernatural events anymore, Paul and Mira contacted an old medium, he said that there was an evil presence in their home after finding an antiqua, a powerful instrument that strings one soul to the physical world to let them stay. The medium tells them that the upcoming eclipse will strengthen all spirits' power and that they should prepare themselves for what's to come. On the night of the eclipse, Paul and Sophie were watching the phenomenon through a telescope when Paul notices a figure on their driveway Maria's body. Slowly approaching them. He took Sophie back in the house to her room where they found a tape inside Sophie's camcorder of Mira telling them something. It was an instruction. Mira told them about feeling that Maria was planning something evil. She gave them instructions on how to defeat her sister using her own antiqua, but right in the middle of it, the lights went out and all the doors locked shut. At this very moment, Mira was led to her suitcase which revealed a hidden spellbook within. This made her see a glimpse of her past. It was her and her sister chanting with her mother. They were practicing spells because her mother wanted to pass down her powers to them once she dies. Mira, not wanting to be a part of it, runs away leaving Maria and her mother. Years pass by and their mother died. She decided to visit her sister, telling Maria that she was taking her to Manila to be with her family. Maria was excited, talking to unseen spirits that warned her that Mira isn't to be trusted. Mira can't see that her sister continued what their mother taught them as kids. The Manila trip, however, was a front. Two men in white uniforms started to take Maria away to a mental institute while she kicked and screamed for her sister to make them stop. Years pass and Mira decided to visit her sister and talk to her. Maria was obviously pissed off and glared at her sister the whole time. She then started to pull on Mira's hair and ripped a good amount of it off, keeping it for later. One night, Maria started to do a ritual using a voodoo doll and her sister's hair wrapped around it. Mira felt this and started to worry as she drove home. 
Maria chanted as she did the spell that will soon switch their bodies. It was successful. Their body switched Mira woke up in Maria's body and freaked out which made the other patients panic and kill her, while calling her the devil. On the other hand, Maria was in Mira's body, but not knowing how to drive a car, she crashed resulting in the car accident and amnesia. The flashback ends with Mira realizing that they switched. A lighting flashes and Mira transforms into Maria's form. She decided to wreak havoc in the house, killing their helper and performing voodoo on one of Mira's family members, giving her face bloody scratches through a picture. Paul finishes watching Mira's instructions on Sophie's camcorder, and they proceed to go outside, making a circle with Maria's ashes. Mira said that trapping Maria inside it will kill her. Maria and Paul clashed with Maria dripping hot candle wax on Paul's photo, making his face bubble and burn. Maria starts to intimidate Paul and get cocky, she steps closer to the circle, making Paul step out of it. As this was all happening, Sophie pushes Maria into the circle, rendering her powerless. She panics. Paul stabs the Antigwar, finally killing Maria and making her disappear. Mira's soul suddenly appears within the circle, saying her goodbyes and I love yous to Paul and Sophie. It transitions to Mira's family giving her a proper burial, and everyone leaving once it's finished. We see Sophie entering her room and pulling out a book from under her pillow. The pages glow revealing the same chant that Mira and Maria learned as children. It was a family heirloom that she cannot escape, the power of voodoo.